We start off with the big growth trade conundrum. All the pieces that should be supporting the sector seem to be falling into place lately. First, investor rates, interest rates have been dropping sharply. The yield on 10-year Treasury is down 75 basis points from its October high. Traditionally, lower rates are good for growth stocks. Then there's a the dollar, also down, almost 9%, in fact, since September. And inflation, signs emerging that pricing pressures are abating. The consumer price index lower five months in a row now. All of that should give a boost to the growth trade, but not this time. The ARK Innovation ETF, for example, losing two-thirds of its value already this year and hitting an all-time low today. And it's not just the highly speculative names that are struggling. Apple dropping more than a percent and a half today and is now just 2 percent from June lows. One of our traders tonight has a stark warning about just how much lower this one-time tech stalwart could go. Let's go to Chris Verone and his charts. Chris, what are you looking at? Hey, Melissa, yeah, I think it's such a great lead because when we think about what's happened over the last week, Everything has been so bullish for growth stocks, but they can't respond to it. Over the last two months, you have rates down, you have dollar down, you have softer inflation, but the big weights, especially Apple, unable to respond here. And I think what's really notable, the street still hasn't changed its opinion of the stock yet. There's 45 analysts who cover Apple. The stock's down 30 or 40 percent from the highs. You still have 37 of 45 analysts and a price target of $173. Everyone is still a buy on the name. I think you have to see more pessimism come into the name before it's buyable. We think that happens lower. And you know, when you consider the longer term picture here of what the chart uh, is actually telling us, you know, here's the last two years. I mean, this looks like one big rolling top formation to us. I thought breaking below that 135 level, which has been support really all year, is a very important development today, closing 132 spot, 37. And, you know, when you take a a little bit of a longer step back, look at the last four or five years here uh, when it comes to the Apple name. Think 12-31-19, before COVID, the stock was $75. So many of these big tech names have simply returned to where they were pre-COVID. That's 75 to 100 for Apple. And, you know, if we take a step back and just look bigger picture, these names, these big tech names, these big growth weights, are still too big. This is the combined weight of the six largest issues on 12-31-21 uh, 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 at the start uh, of this year. They're still 25 percent of the S&P. I think ultimately this goes lower. These bear markets don't end until the best names get hit. That's Apple for us. I like 100. 100. All right, Chris, make your way back to the desk. Steve Grasso, what do you, what do you think of this forecast? Yeah, so, so I do like that how Chris finished off that because the, that's how you know that people are throwing out everything. When they sell what they love, when they sell the, the real rock of Gibraltar names, that's Apple. They haven't done that yet. Amazon is at the COVID level. Apple's not. Yeah. Nowhere near near it. So Apple was what, 50 something? I, I know that you had said it before, but it, you're talking about pre COVID levels. I'm talking about the COVID low was in the high 50s sure. for Apple. People, if that were the case, where would the market be? Oh. I mean, right? so much lower. Yeah. Much lower. But if you if you look at the last time that Apple was at this level, or if it goes to 100, the S&P was at 3,200, 3,250, 3,300. Mm -hmm. Everyone on the street that's negative has those targets in for the S&P. Right. Well, that's how you get there. It has right. to come from the big weights because we've already seen the marginal weights, the ARC stocks, mm -hmm. the smaller cap names down 50, 60, 70 this year. So it's not coming from there anymore. When you look at the top of the market, these big growth stocks, rates down, dollar down, softer inflation, softer growth, that should have been the perfect cocktail for these names to work. They've given us nothing here. When the market doesn't respond like the consensus believes it should, that's a really important message. So I think the weakness in that is telling us that something with the macro is still not right here. Karen, would you sell? Would I sell? Um, no, but I, I understand what you're saying. I do think that the, uh, the, buy side, or the sell side rather being all Positive. Positive uh -huh. is a negative. Yeah. Right? Because there's no incremental new positive to come in. So I, and, and we're going to see some negatives. I do just want to push back a little on how much money they have made since, right, over the last several years. That's one thing. And the second is the business has changed somewhat, right? We know services was really very not, it was pretty marginal. Now it's becoming a much bigger part of the business. And so to me, that seems like it deserves somewhat of a higher multiple. 
But do you feel like those two factors and what you're well, looking at don't matter? No, I'm not asking sarcastically. They may not uh, matter at all. Well, I, I think, number one, when we look at the picture, right, the chart's not pretty. But let's talk about it from a multiple perspective. I still think trading 21, 22 times next year, which is above a market multiple of 17, 18 times here. So it's still trading at a premium with all the China exposure. I would be of the view if you have big China exposure, you should be trading at a discount to the S&P here. So it's, it's um, I think, some inconvenient messages like that that leave us more on the bearish side uh, of the stock. Which a lot of us have been saying for a while, that stocks yeah. that, that have significant exposure to China should trade yeah. at some sort of a discount for some time. And just because China has opened up, it doesn't mean that their China woes in terms of um, their exposure in, you know, in manufacturing there or just to the consumer there, which may be impacted by COVID. I mean, that certainly doesn't go away. Julie, where, where would you stand here on Apple? It does make sense as the market overall. If we believe that there should be a reset on valuations overall, that it's got to come from the biggest part of the markets. That has to join in on this fund. Yeah, I agree. It has to be a part of the of the situation in terms of especially what I would expect in terms of the earnings revisions. And, you know, I think investors today are recognizing that not all tech is the same and a maker of cell phones, thousand dollar cell phones could be really challenged in the next year if consumers continue to get softer and softer. So I personally think it's just a recognition of the fundamentals. That said, I agree that it's one of the highest quality names and its businesses move towards stickier services. So I wouldn't be a seller at this level, but I do recognize that I think that's why we haven't seen the stock work really well in the face of better you know, indicators like inflation and, and a dollar. Chris, what other large cap tech stocks need to join in on the party that haven't already? Well, I'll make two points. Uh, number one, just on the idea that services are stickier. Mm -hmm. We don't know that. Uh, the service line. I, I agree with you. By the, the service way. line of Apple what, is a services kind of a, may not be a, a post two thousand eight phenomenon. So I, I don't think it's really stress tested in what a proper recession or slowdown um, may look like here. And you know, when you talk about the big weights. Microsoft has largely escaped much of the selling here. Again, I, I keep going back to the idea you don't get through these bear markets until the best ones get hit. So I, I would put Microsoft still in that camp here as well. Well, I, I have one, one little add on to this. So Apple is included in 299 ETFs. And they have in the top three or four, they have an above 20 percent rating mm -hmm. in those ETFs. So when you start you real, mean, uh, above 20 percent of the holding? just Apple of the weight. Yep. Oh, OK, yeah. of, of the weight inside, okay. inside that. Rating. ETF. I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, waiting. So what happens when you get all that automatic for selling when people try to sell their Apple? Like a lot of times it mirrors one. It mirrors the other. It becomes a. You know, a, it a, helps a on the way up. Exactly. So, well, there's 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 two parts of this, and if we use the experience of the 2000, 2001, 2002 bear market, there were two phases to that bear market. The big weights underperformed on the way down, but then when the cycle turned, they also underperformed on the way up, right? So that you didn't go back to the the same names as your leadership. So let's just say S and P bottom today, it's over. Bear market's over. That doesn't mean we're going back to Amazon, Apple, Meta, Google as your leadership on the other side of this. I think it's a really important point thinking about 23. So you can be wrong on the market call, but actually be right on the leadership. I, I, I mean, I, I totally see that. If you think about what we're returning to, why should we return to the same leadership if the environment is completely different, if money is no longer free, if inflation is higher than 2 percent? All of these things have changed. And so why should the market leadership be the same? Why should there be a reversion to that norm, Karen? Well, you know, if I look at so Google, my biggest position, mm -hmm. right? There has been a, a big move in Google down. Uh, and I think that the valuation here is nowhere near what it was. And I think that the balance sheet is extraordinary. So I don't, I, I don't, maybe it doesn't get the super premium that it got, but I still think that it is a, it absolutely deserves a premium. The market, the moat there is huge. And just looking at it on valuation, only on valuation, to me, it's very compelling. So maybe tech overall isn't a leader in the market, isn't the leadership, Julie, but maybe some tech stocks are still great. They will be leaders individually. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think, you know, your consumer driven tech names were what really led us out of the pandemic. And I don't think they're going to be the best places to be in 2023. I would rather have smaller niche software businesses that are mission critical and don't have the same level of regulatory scrutiny 
that these large tech players do have. I think they're better able to manage through a difficult environment. And the stuff that they sell, you need it. Netflix, I love it, but I don't need it. When you look at it, though, everyone, so here's the problem I have with new leadership. Where, where does it come from? So if you have, if you have well, let, me finish, let me let finish, let me finish. So if, if, you, if you have, as I said, with the ETFs, they all own yeah. those top six names. So when pe more, more and more people are passively investing, so when they passively invest, they have to buy those six names in, in tech. They're not buying the esoteric, uh, you know, low cap names or mar market cap names. Where's it come from? Well, I think behaviorally, right, it's a lot easier for the large cap growth manager to say, okay, I I'm going to get smaller in my Amazon and my Google and my Apple and I'll buy Bristol Myers or more. Like, that's a logical move into healthcare. I and I think the charts have reflected that. But we've looked at this, right? If you look at the 10 largest stocks at the end of every decade going back the last 100 years, they're not the 10 largest stocks 10 years forward, right? right? So, so um, which are the next 10 largest stocks? Don't, don't, we find, <laughs> don't we find it really curious how well the industrials act through all of this, right? Those used to be a much larger weight in the S&P. So if we're looking right. to identify candidates on the other side of this, let's at least put that on the list of what it could be going forward. Karen, that's like music to your ears. I know. Yeah, I love that. Crazy. Right. Oh, my God. I, well, United Rentals had a great mm -hmm. year. I mean, the infrastructure bill, maybe that's part of it. So we've seen it's been it's been a decent place to hide. That and Big Cap Farmer, that makes sense to me as well. 